Hi, welcome back. My name is Margaret Ryle and this is the second tutorial in the Action Research Tutorials to help you learn to engage in action research. As in all tutorials, there are activities and then resources to support those activities. The activities are supported by a set of resources. The first resource is looking at these different approaches to action research and thinking about what each of them means so that you can get a sense of what kind of approach you plan on using. So let's talk a little bit about the different approaches to action research. Lots of different adjectives are used. You'll see action research by itself, you'll see collaborative action research, participatory action research, community-based action research, action learning, participatory action learning and action research. These are all different ways of conducting action research. But there are also a lot of close cousins of action research that differ from action research in a small way and sometimes are seen as either subsets of action research or their own approach. Which is... In the re resources, I go over those um, and I give you really brief descriptions of each and try to explain that really it, it, it kind of varies on what the person who's doing research is emphasizing in their work. So when we talk about collaborative action research, of course all action research is collaborative, all action research is, is participatory, and most action research is community-based. But the way in which the collaboration, the participation, and the community operate is different in all of those different approaches to action research. Answering the polls will help you see where you fit in the range of different ways of thinking about action research. Defining action research is a challenge because action research in its very nature is a democratic collective process and so everybody gets to say what it is and how it works for their group, for their community. And because of that, there obviously isn't going to be a single model, a single way in which action research is done. So I give you a couple definitions because uh, people do need to be able to say this is or is not action research. The group that needed to define action research was the American Educational Research Association. They solicit and accept papers for uh, the conference every year and so they need to be able to tell the people who are submitting papers whether or not their research fits into the category of action research. While any one of us could have written a definition, it would be from our perspective and as we've been talking about in this tutorial, everyone has their own perspective on the way in which they see action research. And so we didn't want to impose a single perspective. Uh, Elena Polish helped us think about how to use a Delphi study and then combine it with a learning circle approach so that we could get the widest possible characterization of uh, action research for the website. And so you'll see on that website that we have a page long definition of action research that has come from this complicated process of combining everybody's ideas and arguing about what the critical dimensions are. And we've posted it as a living document, hopefully that people when they look at it will say, well yeah, you missed this other really critical part of action research that I focus on when I do action research at the university when I'm helping students develop their their action research for their master's program, I have to be able to help them think about what is and is not action research. My views are shaped by the fact that I'm working with professionals in all different sectors who are, uh, are trying to engage in, in a form of transformational learning. They're trying to improve their workplace at the same time as improve their own personal skills. I describe transformational learning in three areas. The learning, the professional learning that happens to the person who does action research, the change that happens in their setting as a result of doing action research, and then again the change to the person as they start becoming members of the community of action researchers. So those are the three ways in which I think about action research. Jean McMiff takes a values perspective in thinking about action research and focuses on the way in which action research can serve as a form of professional development. And so she moves around the world helping different places provide professional development through action research. In fact, I have a 
definition of action research that I've taken from value and virtue in practice-based research. Action research is a process of people interacting together, learning with and from one another to understand their practices and situations and to take purposeful action to improve them. Jack Whitehead has a site that contains lots of both MAs and PhDs dissertations. He has his approach to action research is to focus on the living theory or on the way in which practitioners are creating theory as they work through their ideas. It's a focus on the learning more so than, say, another person who I also uh, included in the, in the reference, Michelle Fine, who has been doing work with marginalized groups and getting them to own their own problems, collect their own data, and address really serious problems, for example, policing in New York City, by sharing the data that they have with the police department and giving voice to the people who need to make the case that the way in which policing is being done in their communities is not effective. And similarly, working with other groups that have been marginalized, her work is a shining example of the way in which action research can increase social justice. And for some, if you're not engaged in a social justice question, they might challenge whether or not it's action research. For some, that's a defining characteristic. Uh, the context also makes a difference, and I give a couple examples of different contexts. Mostly when I'm in these tutorials, um, I will be thinking about educational context, but uh, action research can be done in any context, and the context it's done in is likely to shape the way it is structured. If you look at the first one, it talks a little bit about uh, action research in the healthcare industry. There is also one that focuses on uh, adult education, which is similar to education, but in the workplace, literally teaching adults to read. And finally, there's a, a section on cultural humility. Cultural humility, rather than assuming cultural competence, helps you move into a setting with an awareness that we have a myopic perspective, that even when we try to look at things from the perspective of others, we fail. And so having a little bit of cultural humility as you approach your action research project will serve you well. As you look through these materials, see if you can see the, both the similarities and the differences between these different definitions. This will help you build your own definition of action research for your work. In tutorial two, you will find four activities. The first one is to document in your blog what your understanding of action research is at this point in time. Hopefully you've looked at some of the materials in tutorial one and you've been working on and developing your ideas about what action research is and how you plan to use it in your own work. So write those down because as you develop your expertise, you won't be able to get back to your current stage, the where you are right now in your understanding. Uh, there are some online polls, and I want to make it clear as I talk about in this tutorial the different approaches and different descriptions or definitions of action research. It's not that some are right and some are wrong. It's that they are different ways of doing action research. All of them are valid, and the polls help you think about when you think about the way you are going to do action research, how important are these seven different dimensions? And how does it compare to what other people who have taken these polls have said? So you get a chance to compare your own views with tens of thousands of other people. As you're forming your ideas about action research, it's so important to share them with other people and get a chance to talk out what you find problematic. And so I hope you have a forum for doing that. If you don't, feel free to use our Facebook page to share your ideas or to share your ideas in our forum. And finally, the last activity that you will do at the end of reading the resources is to form a couple paragraphs description of how you plan to use action research in your own work. This will be a part of your final report. Um, we try to develop your report as you go along so that you will have a draft. It's likely that whatever you write now, you will revise because your understanding of action research will shift. 
but taking some time right now to write down what you think is the uh, the method you're going to use and why you are using action research to explore your problem will be a useful thing for you to have. And finally, being a part of communities or organizations is really an important part of doing action research. So join a network. I give you a number of different ones. Uh, look at sites where, other, where people have posted action research, find action research that's similar to what you want, want to do and use that as a model as you work through your own ideas. Find journals that publish action research because you will both want to read what is in those journals and you will want to think about publishing your own action research to one of those journals. So that's it for tutorial two. I hope you are getting a, a sense of what action research is and you are excited about doing your own action research. The next tutorial will focus on your inquiry question and also how you go from the inquiry question to your cycle questions and the overall phase of planning for your action research project. So uh, come back and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.